Yo, JD here, Tyrrell Limis. And this league race here is actually Inside Line Racing, otherwise known as ILR. And this is actually round one, which happened, I think, a couple of weeks ago now. So this is actually a fair while ago. And first of all, apologies for the quality, because this is going to be in 720p. This is before I actually sorted out my uh, rendering of my stream and everything. And as you know now, all my streams and videos are now in 1080p now. So, yeah. This one was quite a while ago. This is the first round of IOR, which is on the Friday. As as you know, I stream that every single Friday. And we're Australia here today following a 10-season calendar, which like most leagues are doing right now because, obviously, the new game comes out in June. And this one here in the Mercedes. So this is my first race that I did with the Mercedes. I've been doing many races with the Mercedes in many different leagues so far. But this is round one in ILR since then. There's been round two and round three is actually coming this Friday, uh, actually tomorrow, in fact, round Bahrain. But this one here, I was really confident coming into this. As I said in my other videos as well, I've been doing a lot, a lot of practice, particularly in my qualifying pace. So I've been working seriously, seriously hard at that because that was a massive weakness for me, really, ever since I've been on the wheel, to be honest. It's been a massive, massive weakness for me. So I've worked very, very hard outside the track. And this up here is going very well so far, but we've got LCR Leopard who currently is on provisional pole because he is just, to be honest, he's just an absolute beast around here. He is absolutely rapid around here. But you can see, going purple, I think in the first two sectors, so the lap is going extremely, extremely well so far. And yeah, coming to this last sector, just all about really just keeping it together now. And honestly, I didn't really feel like I could do too much more in this lap. I've, I think my PB round here is an 18.8, .8, and we were definitely on course to do that. So coming around the cut, coming around the last corner now, missing the apex ever so slightly, but still getting quite a good run, using the DRS and the rest of my ERS towards the line. And we do a 19-0, which is not quite enough for pole position as Leopard has done an 18.8, .8, so two temps away. But crucially, we get on the front row of the grid, and that's what I needed because, as always. Using my race pace is very good managing at the tyres, ERS and fuel and everything like that. To get on the, the front row of the grid is really what I was looking for here. So a pretty good qualifying. But in this league, it's all about consistency. You do not need to win every single race. So we're now we've got four lights. We've got five lights. Wait for them to go out. And we get a pretty, a pretty decent start. But Leopard gets an absolutely insane launch and Syrah. VSSR on the pad has got a very good launch as well, but we break a little bit later just to ensure because we really we have to stay with Leopard. I know that if I stay with him, there's going to be a chance in this race because Slipstream is quite powerful in this game. Don't yeah, I mentioned on a tweet the other day or yesterday or today, in fact, it's not really as powerful as I think many people would like it to be. So you can see here, Leopard is already trying to get away here, and again, apologies for the quality. I'm quite struggling to see it myself but all future races from now on will be as normal so but yeah just really trying to just stay with him as much as possible so putting up to rich and hot lap here and we just can't afford to get out this drs window at this point my thinking was just literally to just try and stay within this drs if i can just do that then really wait for him to try and make any mistakes if he does make any mistakes and really just try and capitalize them on through the tire wear, just having more fuel in the ERS. I was trying to just save the fuel and the ERS as much as possible whilst not dropping out of that DRS zone, and that was really my goal. So, as I said, done quite a bit of practice for this one, did a full brace practice for this, I think, on multiple occasions. So, because this track is the track is always really exciting for me to actually drive, but I've, although I may have some good pace in here on pretty much every game I've done, I've it's never really been a favour of mine to actually drive, so to try and stay with him is just crucial at this point. And then coming towards the end of lap five here, we almost lose the car, and I was really, really struggling on tyre wear at the moment. But luckily, we've got a nice little buffer to more so behind in third place, but we've actually fallen out of the DRS zone of LCR Leopard because, as I said, his pace was just super super fast right here and it seemed to have quite good tire wear management as well and you can see here just struggling in the car again really really struggling but there's actually a safety car that has come out and honestly pretty unlucky i think for p1r brown who had that safety car but that is a lifeline for me that allowed me to really 
cool down my tyres and it came at a time where two laps later the safety car still we're actually still going to go in the pits and that's going to be me to the end of the race now and the same as Leopard as well so we're going to be on equal tyres and everyone's pretty much going to be in equal tyres in the race I was really really struggling with the tyres on that lap the safety car came out so to be honest it's actually swung in my favour a bit more to have that and now we're actually within DRS zone again because we're going to have to still wait behind the safety car itself so honestly that was a lifeline for me it just give me a chance to regroup myself and to get back within that DRS zone and have another opportunity of trying to go for this win and I think I don't know who sat in front of Leopard I think that's um, VSR Dralex I believe yeah who always likes to stay out <laughs> on the alternative strategy but we're actually going to be starting the race again and so that's the safety cars come in now I think this is the first safety car I've actually ever done this game I've done virtual safety car but I've never actually done a real safety car so making sure my tires are fully up to temperature and again we, we just got to stay with these guys as much as possible and I was definitely much more comfortable on the soft tire than it was on the ultra soft at the start of the race so I knew I definitely could match him on these tires and it was just going to be the case of really trying to push him into the mistake. But now we've got up right behind VSR Dralex. And we've got a nice little gap behind. So there's no real pressure from behind. There's Leopard. He's thinking about going for a move, which actually puts Dralex actually a little bit behind. He's going to go down the inside for his flat out right hander. It actually pushes him out wide onto the gravel. So could have potentially been maybe Stuart's inquiry about that. But I wasn't really thinking about this point. I was thinking of just attacking Leopard as much as I can. As he actually goes out wide. But unfortunately, we do not have DRS. And my car wasn't really the quickest in a straight line. I was really just trying to make a setup that was good on its tyres, really, to be honest. But I was still struggling with that, particularly in the first stint. But for the rest of this race now, I should be absolutely fine in that. And staying on board this lap is really just an example of what you're dealing with. Because the dirty air is... Not massively powerful, but I think it's slow speed corners. That's where I really affect it in the high speed. I don't really affect it too much. It's just in the slow speed. But it's just very, very hard to get past them. The, the slipstream is powerful, but it's just around particular tracks like this in Spain. I've noticed that it was particularly hard to overtake. But I think that was really mainly down to my setup. Where it's not really good for a straight line. It's really built for traction and just to get some really good downforce in the car. And you can see here, not really gaining too much here, but we should be getting the DRS coming off this corner. And we can see how close we are, but it happens a little bit of lift through there. As I said, just a little bit of that dirt here, but we're not close enough at this point. And I'm really kind of relying on him to actually make a mistake. And my goal now really was to just really get underneath his gearbox and really put some serious pressure and make him force him into defending. And if I could do that, there's going to be a chance in this race to do that. But all the time, Imagine the fuel, imagine the air. Still got quite a bit of fuel left. I think we got two and a bit laps. If I can, if I can actually read my screen, I think two and a bit laps of fuel left, and we're putting away from the third place guy more so quite quickly at this point. So no pressure from behind. I think I've only got one warning at this point in the race, or maybe even two. So penalties are quite easy to accumulate around here. So I wasn't really hoping for that because I. Always want to run a race on actually in track position rather than just relying on penalties. But if he actually got a penalty, I could afford to just sit behind him. And I think at some point in this race, I definitely do check here. But now we're really trying to mount the pressure on here. And this is as close as I could really get in this midfield. I'm really trying hard to just give maximum pressure as much as possible. We'll go go up to a hot lap. And it's just a straight line speed. We just don't have enough to get seriously seriously close to him and you'll be able to see in the exit of this corner going through here get some really good speed but losing a little bit of time on the exit we just can't get that exit speed we need but skipping on towards the end of the race now again we're going to be quite close here using lean through here just to give me a bit better traction off the corners and going to this one here he goes in slightly deep but we're just trying to get a good exit because really this seems to be my best corner the last corner always seem to get quite a good exit now and let's see what the straight line speed is going to be down the straight we're definitely gaining quite considerably and again no pressure from behind from Tiro Marta as well we've the pace from both of us has been absolutely excellent this race and I was very very happy if this is the driving and everything and this is the closest I've been coming through into turn two turn three now and breaking definitely can break late in him but you can see a little bit affected by that dirty end of slow speed corners and on the exit he just gets away again so 
I was really trying hard now to just try and get as close as possible on the exit. And again, this is probably the closest I've actually been so far. So I was thinking about going for a move, breaking later again when he hits the apex nicely. And again, through his slow speed corner, you can see through here, car just washing away a little bit. You just, through the slow speed, I just can't get close enough on that exit. But again, I just still didn't give up this race because I'm just so determined to try and win this season in all the leagues that I'm competing at the moment. Because as I said, I've just really I felt I felt I've definitely stepped up a new level recently and I just want to just try and prove myself and the results I can do and I was thinking about going in the inside here but decided to think better of it because I know Leopard is quite an aggressive driver so I decided to not do it there but off this corner again getting a quite a nice exit and again this is probably again the, the closest I've actually been so far no real option to go into turn one using that seventh gear for that engine braking and this is definitely the closest we've come out of turn one here and now this is going to be the first real opportunity that we're going to overtake so he actually goes defensive here no real option to go around the outside because i knowing leopard and just how tight the track is he probably would have just taken the racing line and at this point we've got such a big buffer to third i don't really want to damn it get any damage or anything at all if i came second this race it's all about consistency in the season and first track that i wasn't really expecting really myself to be dominant at or taking the win at I think a second behind Leopard who I know this track is a very good track for him I think that'd be a good result but if I can still take the win that would just be an absolute massive bonus and we've got a lap and a half of this race to go now and each lap I just getting slightly slightly closer but you can see here again just can't keep that frost win just in the high speed and the slow speed it's just very very difficult but I was kind of relying on him maybe suffering of a little bit of fuel because I've got a little bit of fuel left myself and some ERS. I was just really hoping that maybe he'd run out of some or go into low battery mode at the end of this race. But you can see here the car's starting to wash away again. And this time we've actually lost a little bit of time. But still, it's the last lap. He's going to be quite nervous just to check if he's got any penalties. But it looks like he doesn't have any penalties at this point. And we just got to go all or nothing now. I can afford to actually get a penalty because the gap is over three seconds behind me. So even if I get a penalty, it doesn't really matter too much. I decided to just go for it in the last lap and really try and force him into a mistake. If I could just do that, then that'd be great. So going up into rich, going up into high again, completely flat out. his right-hander, but almost looks in the car. And yet, so you can see the dirty air effect through there, going through the end of sector one. You don't really want to hit the curb too much there because it can definitely just spit you out going to rich and hot that once again and can pretty much use ERS almost to the end of this race now and it's very crucial that we get a good exit off here as we do we get some very good traction come over here now and this is probably going to be my last opportunity coming off this next left and right hand at the DRS zone so let's see carrying a lot of speed through here sacrificing entry and definitely getting a better exit this is the closest I've been on the exit of this now but it looks like we're just not going to be close enough just to mount an attack and coming off this corner here, running on the cup, using a little bit of throttle. And yeah, I just decided to punch it a little bit just to see if I could get him into his next left-hander. Almost lost the car there. And we're about to come around the last corner now. And I believe he doesn't have any penalties. And for round one of ILR, we are going to come just behind LCR Leopard. And honestly, I'm really, really happy of that. I don't think I really made any mistakes. Maximize what I could do in Qualia. I definitely wouldn't have got pole. I wouldn't have beaten 18.8. And then the race didn't really do any mistakes. He was really quite uncrackable under pressure. And he fully, fully deserved the win there. So that is IOR round one. I'll be streaming tomorrow, Friday, uh, which is round three. Round two will be coming out in a highlights package in next week, I believe, at China. That was a, a fantastic race. And again, thank you so much for supporting my videos recently. It absolutely means everything. And this video, as I said, 720p for this one because this was done quite a while ago. But all videos from now on will be in the best quality. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you soon. Peace.